हेलो एंड वेलकम टू एजुकेशन एट एसएसबीजे ऑनलाइन वीडियो ट्यूटोरियल्स वी आर इन द चैप्टर नंबर सिक्स ऑफ क्लास एट सीबीएसई कंबशन एंड फ्ले राइट इन द प्रीवियस वीडियो ट्यूटोरियल वी हैव लर्न द मीनिंग ऑफ कंबशन एंड व्हाट इज कंबशन कंबशन इज द केमिकल प्रोसेस ऑकर व्हेन द सब्सटेंस रिएक्ट विथ ऑक्सीजन गिव्स हीट एंड sometimes light also now all those substances which can combine with oxygen and gives heat and light are combustible substances and rest of the substances which cannot combine with oxygen to give light and heat are non combustible substances and then we have seen requirement for combustion and what is required for combustion we require fuel okay and what is fuel all combustible substances are fuel okay for example petrol petrol is combustible substance therefore uh, it is a fuel a paper also can be a fuel wood is a fuel all these are combustible substance right so we require fuel for the process of combustion what else we require oxygen and then we require very important ignition temperature and what is ignition temperature ignition temperature is the lowest temperature at which the substance catch fire these things we have learned and discussed in the previous video tutorials you must have seen on some vehicles a uh, caption is written caution flammable liquid what do you mean by mean by flammable or we can even say inflammable substance or inflammable liquid substances which have very low ignition temperature so all those substances which are having a low ignition temperature they can catch fire suddenly for example phosphorus the symbol is p and at 30 degree centigrade it catches fire that 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 is why this is uh, stored in water so some of those which are having a low ignition temperature can be called as flammable substances or inflammable substance okay therefore the definition of uh, inflammable substances is the substance which have very low ignition temperature and can easily catch fire with a flame are called inflammable substances for example petrol uh, alcohol or petroleum lpg gas so they are all inflammable so the truck carrying such uh, substances are generally seen uh, with a board written at the back caution inflammable substance or just inflammable now we'll go for a types of combustion we have learned what combustion is now there are three types of combustion the first combustion is a rapid combustion now this rapid word tells us when the combustion is called as rapid combustion the conditions are it should be rapid and it should give more amount of heat okay i'll give you one example uh, every day we see just a spark can lit the lpg gas the so rapid meaning in a short span of time in short span of time means in short time this gets into flame just with a little spark okay and then it gives more heat and light so heat and light should be produced that is another condition okay and therefore such combustions are called rapid combustions right when a substance burst in a short span of time so this is to be underlined the combustion of the substance is almost complete and large amount of heat and light is produced and when these things happen it's called rapid combustion please remember uh, it should be very rapid and it should give out more amount of heat the next one is spontaneous combustion now let me give you one example we have already talked about uh, a element called phosphorus right so phosphorus has a ignition temperature of 30 degree so sometimes the 30 degree is you know less than the room temperature in summer and therefore if you keep this phosphorus outside then you need not give any external heat to this 
it gets into fire on its own and that is why it is stored in water to in a cool condition okay such combustion where material suddenly burst into flame without any external application of heat is called spontaneous combustion the type of combustion is which a material suddenly burst into flames without the application of any apparent cause okay we have not given any external heat to this and then it is uh, referred as a spontaneous combustion now third one is explosion okay now in this combustion reaction what happens when it is ignited when we supply heat lot of heat is produced in combustion not only heat a light and even the sound energy also produced so we get in this reaction more amount of heat light as well as sound energy and then we call this as explosion okay so explosion is the third type of combustion we have seen a rapid combustion we have learned a spontaneous combustion and the third combustion is a explosion okay the reaction occurs when something ignites to produce heat light and sound energy okay and that is explosion right firecrackers are the best examples for explosion now let us come to a topic of how to control the fire for example there is an a fire accident and how do you control this fire for that we need to know the information that we require three things to which causes fire right and what are those three things fuel ignition temperature right and then oxygen now it's very simple for us to control fire what causes fire fuel causes fire ignition temperature causes fire and oxygen causes fire therefore either you stop fuel or stop more than one of any of this component either you stop oxygen or ignition temperature and that is why you know generally uh, any one of this or more than this if you control then the fire will be controlled easily and that is why to control ignition temperature means the temperature should be low uh, it should not go to its ignition temperature therefore we have to create a environment which is very cold and so fireman what does he do he will pour water to keep it cold so that's the reason why uh, the fire is controlled so in this process what is done it is uh, not allowed the fuel to get into its ignition temperature or else you can stop oxygen suppose if there is a fire accident and then uh, either you can pour water if he is wearing any of the nylon cloths and all that suddenly catches fire and that's a very good fuel so bring down its ignition temperature by pouring water or cut down the oxygen so how will you cut down the oxygen wrap him with the help of cloth okay and that is the another method right the most common fire extinguisher is water water is most common fire extinguisher right but we cannot use every time water what does water do water brings down the temperature right and it doesn't allow the fuel to reach its ignition temperature but it cannot be used in most of the cases for example there is a electrical uh, electrical pole and electrical wires or electrical circuits are there at home and there is a fire accident there then you cannot expect someone to come and fireman to climb onto the place and pour water and what does it happen if it does then there water being a good conductor of electricity so there is a chance of electricity to flow into the water and to the body and he will be electrocuted okay the person will get a electric shock and that is to be strictly avoided here we should not pour water okay the second example is if sir, there is a, a fire accident uh, uh, in the petrol pump uh, should we use water 
no okay why why we should not use water there is no chance of electricity ele getting electrocuted here but why we should not use water here let me tell you that when you mix water as well as petrol right water is okay little heavier than the oil so what happens so when the both are mixed the petrol still will be floating on water right petrol still will be floating on water how much ever you pour the water on this right petrol will be always on the top layer because water is heavier so when the petrol comes to a top layer it will continue to burn so no effect of pouring water so what to do right we should not pour water so in these cases uh, in case of petrol as well as electrical uh, accidents of fire we should not use water but however we should use a carbon dioxide as a best fire extinguisher look at this what do you mean by fire extinguisher the substance which puts off the fire okay and we generally see fire extinguishers written you know on a cylindrical type of box you know what does it contains it contains a compressed carbon dioxide the moment you release this carbon dioxide will rush there are some chemicals inside they pro it produces carbon dioxide and that is stored inside okay but why how is that carbon dioxide works right let's say there is a fire here and what does we require for fire we require oxygen for fire we require fuel for fire we require ignition temperature for fire okay so these things we require now any one of this we have to cut we cannot cut fuel in this case because already fuel is burning now ignition temperature let's say that this is such it's a petrol where we cannot pour water also so this also is not possible now we have to avoid this oxygen okay what does it contains carbon dioxide now when this is released so carbon dioxide will rush out and then have a envelope over it carbon dioxide is heavier than oxygen okay so what happens oxygen will be on the top and carbon dioxide creates a layer here a kind of envelope so when i draw this line it's a understand that it's a carbon dioxide envelope okay like we have an envelope of carbon dioxide even in the atmosphere so that creates a carbon dioxide envelope and that doesn't allow the oxygen to get inside so the immediate effect is having no oxygen sufficient oxygen here down the fire will get off and this should be done whenever there is a requirement of carbon dioxide and where we cannot use a water or any other materials to put off the fire in the case of petrol we have to use this fire extinguisher carbon dioxide will rush out and put off the fire it will block the entry of oxygen and then even in the fire accident it will block the entry of oxygen okay by creating a layer since it's heavier and therefore we should always remember such the places where uh, there is a possibility of uh, such accidents such as laboratories okay such as uh, you know uh, companies and uh, where there are more of uh, electrical equipments are there there we need to have fire extinguisher fitted to the wall and the people also should be trained how to use these fire extinguishers let us discuss about flame you must have seen when you lit a candle and observe the flame very keenly you will find a different colors of flames which are available you can clearly bifurcate these zones what we call these are called zones of flame and this is very important question 
expect this question in the exams to draw the diagram of parts of flame and label it properly well let us draw zones of candle flame zones of candle flame right so when you draw this you have to properly label it so let us discuss on that uh, let us draw the flame first so what I do is I'll take a innermost layer of the flame and then draw a center layer and then a outside zone okay when we when I call a layer it's a zone okay and then it's a thread and that is over a candle so you can just show it as a candle well now the outermost part of this flame is called outer zone in outer zone complete combustion is possible so here complete combustion and why here complete combustion it is more exposed to oxygen outside okay easily available we, we know that for burning for combustion oxygen is required so it is required more in quantity so more the oxygen so better the combustion process is and therefore this part is hottest now the next zone is middle zone so we will label it as middle zone where there is partial combustion is possible and why uh, there is a partial combustion what do you mean by partial combustion partial combustion in the sense more of carb oxygen is not available here so whatever substance is there is not completely burnt here in this uh, zone therefore it is partial combustion right and it's not so hot and not so cold so we can uh, refer it as moderately and the last one it's the least hot and that is what called innermost zone and there is more of unburnt wax is available and why more of unburnt wax because less of oxygen supply here being this as the innermost zone so generally it appears black in color whereas it's a bluish bluish is uh, a indicator of hottest uh, zone there will be more of temperature you can very easily test it you can take a, a paper or a metal sheet and then keep over here keep over the flame if this is a flame so you can keep over the flame like this and then you will find bottom of this on this side you will find a carbon which is formed carbon rings which are formed right and what does this carbon ring suggest these are the unburnt particles right so this is what the answer you should uh, draw and label it properly for the question draw zones of candle flame so that will carry for mark okay with all labeling so we shall see remaining content of this chapter in the next video tutorial till then thank you very much thank you very much